Hi friends, so a DIY loft build. I remember when I was a little kid watching Jurassic Park for the first time. There's this scene where they fall off this cliff and they, they're down on the canopy floor and you get this sense of danger like anything could get you. So they need to find somewhere to sleep so they take off up into the tree and sleep up in the canopy. And ever since then I've always kind of got a sense of safety being up high. Even when I'm climbing I, I feel like I'm safer up high like nothing could get me. So um, I've always found comfort sleeping in a loft and also when you build a loft and your bed's up off the ground you get this whole new space of your room. You're using a whole nother dimension of your room and you get to kind of be your own monster under your own bed and do whatever you got to do under there. So uh, let's, I'll show you how I do it. Let's get started and I'll, I'll show you how I build one. Let's go. So the first step is just planning and measuring everything. Where are you going to put this thing? Where do your beams go? How high? How, how much are you going to split the room by? Um, what's the head height going to be? We wanted to fit this crib underneath because James isn't old enough to sleep in a big bed yet. So this, we still need to be able to fit the crib under there and easily put them in and out. Here I'm doing a little trick I like to do to find out exactly where the beams are. I drill a little hole and then feed a piece of wire in. Yeah, you could use a stud finder, but I like to know exactly where those beams are. So I'll use a piece of wire. Next is some more measuring and figuring out and planning. Now I have a little helper with me. Of course, crossing your legs helps get the measurements perfect. And uh, pulling all my tools out and realizing they're all old and, and used, here's some wood burned. So I, I, that's one of the things that takes a long time. You know, you don't expect all that other stuff you gotta deal with. You know, all your tools are messed up or whatever. Here I'm putting three screws on each beam. So like, super sturdy construction. Old time subscribers will recognize this thing. This is my hanging DIY hanging chair build finally coming down. What a pain in the butt that was to get off. Well, that's the last time I used one of these special star bit things. You lose the bit and you ain't no getting this thing out. I had to use a file and file down both ends and then use a vice grips to get them out. Man, pain in the butt. So uh, I tried to get a lot of help from my wife, but she's a full-time mom, so I had to use books to hold up stuff. Ah. <sighs> Hey everybody, so uh, I, I was gonna time lapse this whole build, but then I, uh, it was so, it, the data was so intense, it blew up my camera's hard drive. So luckily I'm a climber that believes in redundancy. So I also filmed with my other camera and my cell phone. So me and this magic stick are gonna walk you through the clips and uh, talk about exactly how this built was built, this loft was built. So let's get right into it. First, the plywood on top that the bed goes onto. Okay, so day three, plywood day. Yes, I'm filming this with my phone. I'm a professional YouTuber, so I know what I'm doing. All right, so um, the, what the, the trick I'm doing with this plywood is I don't want this end to show like this, like a, like a plywood sandwich. So what I'm gonna do is, oh, you guys are upside down. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick another piece of two by four, but I'm gonna cut a channel in it so the plywood fits in that channel and then this sits on top of this wood here. So you don't see the edges of the plywood. That's why I cut it a little bit in from this so that there's a channel over here. And then also I'm gonna do the same thing over here and make a channel over here. I guess while I'm here, I'll tell you what happened over here. So this beam, I wanted to be perfectly solid and I'm not drilling it to the floor. So I got, I got it connected here, which gives it one point of stability. But then I also went up into the ceiling and I screwed it up in there. And I had to put some wood, I had to stack some wood, some sister beams so that I could put this to that. So that was a little bit tricky. Now I have some drywall repair. Okay, back to the plywood business. After that top plywood was installed, it was time to put a nice piece of plywood underneath. So next step was putting some two by threes to support that plywood and some metal brackets in the corners. I also took a nice piece of plywood. If I ever build a bed underneath here, I want it to be, I want it to look really nice because this is the one you're gonna look at. So it's about like a $63 piece of plywood that we're putting under here. That is gonna be butt up right against those two by threes that are up in there. And then holding that up and holding those framing two by threes is gonna be this, this uh, two by three, I put it around the whole perimeter. That's gonna push it all up like this and give it all support. After that, it was time to put this two by six over this four by four. What this allows is this cross beam that comes across. 
this is directly on top of this two by six. So these two by sixes that are coming, uh, wrapping around this four by four and being screwed into it are no longer just being supported by the four screws, but are sitting directly on top of the two by six, which makes it really structurally sound. It's a lot more load bearing like that. So that's that. Next was the hardest part about this whole build, which was this rope frame. I had to do a, a couple key things. So one of the things it has to do is I don't want it to be able to fall out. It needs to be really structurally sound in case the kid falls up against it or whatever. And the way I did that is I had to cut it in a very special way. What I first planned on doing was making like a mortise and tenon joint where you just slip it in, but that was way too difficult. So then what I decided to do was take the two by three and just cut channels in it with my table saw so that I could have um, those other two by threes slip right in like so like a glove two thumbs up all that was holding this unfortunately wood here. they were so weak they broke Aww. so i had to change it out for Aww. two by four oh, that's satisfying <laughs> So here's a better look at it. We have this cross channeled out two by four, and then we have this little boot, this little L, and that slips into that because that's also channeled out for this, butts up against that two by four so we can't, it can't come out like that. It also allows me to put a screw in there. So it's stable at the bottom, can't come out. Then the cross sections are put across into here. And then this one I messed up, but this one also screws up into this top frame, which goes around here. So I added this top frame two by four across the ceiling, which goes straight into the beam up there. This allows the top of this vertical piece to butt up against that so it can't come out. Can't go this way, can't go that way. So that took a lot of thinking. We're like two weeks into this build. I was naive enough to think that it was gonna take me three days or at least a week, but it took a lot of thinking and planning just to get this done. Another key thing that this had, I wanted this thing to do is to be able to open up and be accessible. Kids have accidents and just like, just like I almost did. And uh, you wanna be able to get the mattress out. You don't want this sealed up forever. If I put screw, if I put holes all along this this, this piece here, and I put holes all along there, you'd be untying every single one, it'd be a real pain in the neck. So, these are all constrictor knots, and I sanded these cross ones really well, so they're nice, nice and smooth. All I have to do is untie these knots, which come out and done pretty easily, and this whole thing could just slide open from either end. I could slide the whole net and then get up in there. Really accessible. So once this main frame was built and the planning was done, it was time just to add the ropes. So the rope I'm using is 3 8 600 foot nylon. And uh, my wife liked the idea of whipping the ropes because it looks nicer, but I had to use uh, electrical tape and then so it doesn't fall apart because I'm using three braid of uh, nylon. And you might be saying, Josh, why don't you just melt the ends? Well, three braid doesn't really melt very easily. And then here I'm just tying overhands onto the top section. This is how they went. Then to get it nice and straight, the lines, I put a mason line across. That way I know exactly where, and I put knots so I can find out how long to cut it. They were about 20, well, yeah, 20 feet long, those, those ropes there for me. And then you, you splice it through one end and then kind of just tie an overhand. This took me the better part of the afternoon. And then this is a completed look. Well, that about wraps it up. That's the whole build. I'm, I'm still not completely finished. Over here is where as we talked about last week. You watched last week's episode. I want to build a little rope elevator. So, you know, it's harder to fall. I could build stairs here. Maybe better yet, just a little ladder here. What's nice about building a ladder in this little space, if you let go of the ladder, all you're going to do is fall back and, and fall against this wall. You really can't fall anywhere which is nice. So I might build a little elevator. I, I took, it took me so much of my time 
uh, planning and building this one that I haven't even put much thought in how to build the elevator, but I'm actually kind of excited to build one. I want to build one. Um, of course, I make myself super accessible with these DIY builds. I have Instagram, a Discord, where you can always get to me and, and ask me questions. People are still asking me questions about this uh, rock wall, this, uh, what, what's the word? Oh, adjustable rock wall. People are still asking me questions. I think I built that almost a year ago. I still answer questions about that. So if you're watching this video a year or two later, don't, don't, don't hesitate to reach out and ask me questions. I'll tell you, I could probably get, send you pictures and updates of what it looks like then, which might be exciting. This is just still kind of feels like the bare bones, but it looks pretty nice. So that about wraps it up. Josh Perry climbing out of here. If you have any questions, let me know. Oh, another thing. When you build one of these, you plan to build one of these. First of all, I could have made this way more detailed, but if I did, the video would have been an hour long. But when, if you're gonna build one of these, you, you need to think about the head height. Your mattress might be eight inches or you know 10 inches or whatever. If, you're, if your mattress is up high, you don't want it to be to the point where you get up in the morning and whack your head on the ceiling. So you have to think about that. And that's one of the reasons it took a long time to build this thing, because I didn't want to have any of those uh, uh-oh, I should have did this moments. So work, I worked slow and, and methodical and thought about everything. So see you guys next week. At least I tried to think about everything.